Hans Wormhat. In this video, I want to take a look at this clip. It just came up on my YouTube recommended. It's from 2017, so it's not super new, but it's a topic that really interests me, and I think more people need to know about it and talk about it. And to me, it's really similar to the fake animal thing in that you can find people that are even into conspiracy. They know that stuff on the TV is fake. They know that things that they teach you in school is fake, but you tell them a panda's a fursuit or a gorilla's a fursuit, and they refuse to listen. And I think it has something to do with the fact that we grow up thinking that documentaries must be real life. And that's not true. Everything on the TV is fake and produced footage. Documentaries are some of the worst. Do you, do you guys remember when it wasn't even, well, it, by now it probably was like 10 years or something, but it doesn't feel like that long. Not that long ago, Nat Geo, they put out this strange mermaid thing, and so many people believed that this mermaid documentary was real just because it was playing on Nat Geo. And I think that's part of the, the mocking and also disclosure that everything on Nat Geo is fake and produced footage. Now I'm going to show you the clip. Orange is the only color that's 33. It's just as important and just as obvious as when they say 33 all the time, is when you just have random orange stuff all over the place. This is supposed to be some cannibalistic sect of some tribe. Who knows where this is really supposed to be happening. But I imagine if, if you tried to go find these people, they just don't exist. That's what I believe. But anyways, where do they get all these orange, fresh flowers? And there's this giant pile of orange stuff in the background. And look at how the flowers look like a penis on the right. They're really infantile, and they love just infantile jokes. And to me, this whole thing is just a bunch of actors, and the acting gig is to try to not bust up laughing. Maybe I, I'll take this off right now and then... Okay. Just thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Why are people on that side of the river so afraid of the Agori? I see. Um... Why, why do they're all cracking up. Feel like this may have been a mistake. Maybe we just, like, somebody distracts him and then I just leave. Let's but see where it goes. We can be polite. I can be very polite about it. To me, that just reads like all those fake mockumentaries that uh, are pretty popular. Nothing about that seemed legitimate or real. And all they have to do is put it on Nat Geo and then it must be real in people's minds. Let me know in the comments what you think. Here is what Here is the idea that I believe that they're trying to push the opposite of this in the media when they have stories like this, but they don't even really need reasons, although there often are reasons, and their reasons are often to go against the Bible, but they just love coming up with fantastical tales and getting people to believe in them. So don't always assume that they need a million reasons that make sense for why they lie, because liars will lie for no reason, because it gives them a kick to get people to believe their BS. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And I believe we're already there. I think that the gospel has been published in all nations. I don't believe in uncontacted tribes out there. They're, they love showing ridiculous videos of, oh, this, this person is uncontacted, and then they show them looking at a mirror, and this alleged uncontacted person starts freaking out like they've never seen their reflection before, but everyone can see their reflection in water. And just tons of inconsistencies in these things. To me, it's really obvious when 
what you're watching is what they want you to think and not how real life works. You just kind of get a sense for, am I watching real life or am I watching a produced skit that somebody wrote and then they have costume designers and then they're following their lines or whatever they had laid out. And to me, it just becomes really obvious that you're not watching real life, you're watching produced footage. Here's just a really interesting side topic. And let's say, because the one thing about that, I don't know if that person was supposed to be speaking some well-known African language, but just a general issue with these uncontacted tribe type stories that they have, they have thousands of these stories. That's another thing too, is that they can always bring these stories out of the, the ether and then just retcon them in... Anyways, their languages. How are they communicating with these people? And... Let's say that you even wanted to go learn a language like Hopi. It's really difficult to go learn these obscure languages. So how do they always have a translator at the ready for these obscure languages that these uncontacted tribes or these tribes out in the middle of the Amazon, allegedly, or these cannibals, how do they communicate with them? And so in this particular case, I don't know if that person was speaking in African language or just speaking in tongues. But this Hopi thing, this is very interesting. What if you wanted to go learn the Hopi language? There's this, doc, this dictionary out there. It's $500. I'm in the process of learning the Hopi language, and this seems to be the only dictionary available. This book has been extremely useful. My only complaint is the ridiculous price. Why are books on rare languages so expensive? Don't we want anyone to learn them? Hmm... Do they want anyone to learn them? Is there even anything there for people to learn half the time? Probably worse than half the time. I just liked this. This review seemed honest. I was told that this dictionary is difficult to understand. What do you know? There's only a single dictionary on the Hopi language, and it's like... 500 bucks, and it's hard to understand. The writers only explained Hopi words in the third person sense. Anyways, just to finish up this video, Richard Nixon, the American people don't believe anything until they see it on television. And there's something about this fake animal programming, fake history programming, and fake tribal, uh, anthropological, you might call it, anything that they tell you is a documentary People have a hard time understanding that they're just being BS'd, and just because somebody puts something on TV and calls it a documentary doesn't make it true. They, I, I believe, as far as I know, this is claimed to be real. And I've seen other mentions of, oh, cannibalistic tribes in, in pop culture. People writing a book, oh, I went and spent a month with a cannibalistic tribe and learned all about them you're getting your leg pulled by some orange 33 mason who's just writing a crazy tale and then selling it to people. Hope you enjoyed the video. God bless everyone.